Okay, today we're going to practice setting up logos uh, for, for drawing and tracing in Illustrator. Um, eventually you will, of course, trace your own uh, logo in Illustrator, but we're going to practice with some professional logos so you can see how uh, professionals lay out and set up their logos um, for, for actual use. So from the website, sportslogos.net, um, note that those are both plural, sports and logos.net, not .com. Um, I've gone to the uh, Panthers uh, section to find their new logo. They just started using this in 2012. And um, my first step here is to actually copy this logo. I've clicked all the way through to find the big logo. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to um, Save Image As. And I'll save it over to my desktop. Um, I think that's going to be a little bit easier for me to do. So it downloads. It's, it's sitting on my desktop now. And I can minimize my browser away. Over in Illustrator, I have uh, just a blank document waiting for me. Um, size and format don't necessarily matter. In this case, I've got a letter size and it's uh, landscape format. And I'm going to find my uh, logo that's sitting on the desktop. You can kind of see it over on the edge here. And I'm just going to drag and drop it onto um, my image. Okay, So you can see how big those pictures are on the internet, which is why we use that website, because they have nice uh, large pictures. My next step that I'm going to do here is uh, go to my layers panel and I'm going to drag that out. I always like to have my layers panel out and it's especially important on a project like this. <clears throat> and I'm going to do a couple of things uh, on my other panels. I'm going to take my transparency and I'm going to lower it all the way down so it's almost like I'm putting tracing paper on here and then I'm going to lock my layer down, lock my layer one, okay, which means I can't draw on it. So there's actually other ways to do this as well and you'll find with doing things in Illustrator you'll usually find a lot of different ways to do this. There's a place command and there's other things that other tutorials might show you how to do. This is just kind of the method that I like to use, uh, what I've shown you so far. Um, so the layers panel I'm going to keep out and floating around because I, I'm going to need it quite a bit. And I'm going to do all my drawing, since I've locked down layer one, I'm going to do all of my drawing on an additional layer. So this is the new button. Most of the panels in Photoshop and Illustrator have this new button. So I click on new and I have a new layer for me to work on. Okay. And uh, then I have to decide how am I going to draw this. And I've encouraged everybody to think about complete closed shapes. That's no different here. Um, in this case, I don't see anything where I could use uh, basic shape tools, squares, circles, rectangles, ellipses, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to be pretty much relegated to my pen tool in this case. So I'm going to get my pen tool and before I start on this step I want to make sure that I have my colors set. And that doesn't mean I have them set to the colors that I want here but I'm actually going to just use a black stroke right now and then I'm going to turn my fill off. Okay, turn my fill off is, is an important part of this step. Um, and the reason is, is while I'm drawing, if I were to have a fill on there, my drawing would start to disappear. It would look like I was covering up the old, uh, the old uh, logo down below. Okay, so I don't want um, to cover up my work. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. I'll change the colors later. So I'll start with my pencil and I think I'm just going to start right here. And just like we did in the heart tutorial, uh, I just start by just clicking once. I'm not clicking and dragging. And then uh, this is where our practice from the heart comes to play. Okay? We're going to try to draw this curve. And this is all we're focusing on right now is this curve of the back of the, the panther here. I'm going to try to, for each long curve like this, I'm going to try and have a point at the beginning, somewhere in the middle, and at the end. Okay? So I've got my beginning point. I'm going to go to the middle and I'm just going to stretch this out and all I'm doing is looking at this line here and the line has to fit the panther okay <clears throat> I know that that doesn't fit so I'm not going to let go of the mouse I know that that doesn't fit so I'm not going to let go of the mouse I want to make it just a nice smooth line that fits the original drawings smooth line okay 
So you see my handlebars generally going in the same direction that my curve is going, and they're not crossing the curve at all. So then I've got my beginning, I've got my middle, and then I'm gonna go on and click and create my end. And again, I'm going to um, stretch it until it fits. And that's a pretty smooth line. It could be a little bit better, and we might go back later and fix it, just like we did on the heart tutorial. Now, at this point, this is a, this is a new step for you, uh, because we're going to change directions here. You've learned how to make pretty smooth lines, but uh, if I were to go to put a point here at the ear, it's going to try and follow this handlebar, see? Like that. And of course, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look how we want it to look. So let me zoom in here, and I'm going to undo. So while we're drawing, if we go back and re-click on the point that we're just on, do you see the cursor change? Just a little slight change in the lower right-hand corner of that pen tool. You get the convert anchor point tool kind of shows up. You get that little upside-down V look. So when I click, that front side handlebar is now gone. So it's not going to mess with me as I continue to try to draw. So whenever I have a direction change, I'm going to go back and click. So let me continue on. and I'm just bending it until it fits. I'm a little bit off, and again, I'll go back and fix this later. I'm gonna continue on, bending it until it fits. Okay, so I've got a long curve here. I don't wanna try and get the entire top of his head all in just a couple of points. So I'm down here, and I'm gonna go kind of somewhat in the middle here, stretch it until it fits. Once it fits, I let go. Okay and then continue on. I'm going to do a second point in the middle, stretch it until it fits. Okay, and then the curve kind of ends here and goes in a different direction. So there's my ending point, stretch it till it fits. And then I've got the nice smooth curve across the top of our panther's head. Okay, so now this, this end point of this curve becomes the beginning point of the next curve. So I've got beginning. This is a short curve, so I'm not going to have a middle but I'm going to have an end, okay, and it fits. So now I'm going to go around the edge here, okay, and then go to the end. Now, interesting thing happens on this whiskers, these whiskers here. I could go down and then go to here and then go across the whiskers and then back down and then down and then back across. But that will actually kind of make it a little bit lumpy and not look uh, too good. Uh, what I want it to do is just make a nice long smooth curve on the side of the cheek. Then later on I can go back and add the whiskers and combine them in using uh, the shape builder or the pathfinder. So I want a nice long smooth curve so I'm going to ignore those whiskers for now. So there's a direction change. I'm going to go back and click. Okay, so curve here. So I've got a beginning, middle, and then down to the end. Okay, pretty smooth there. Okay, and then I've got a direction change, so I go back and click. That's my beginning, middle, and end. Could be smoother, go back and fix that later. So then I've got a new beginning. Let me go back and click. This is a pretty short one, so I'm not going to do a middle. I'm just going to go straight down to the end. I've got a direction change. So I click, beginning, I'm going to find kind of a middle to my curve, just bending it until it fits, and there's my end of the curve. Okay, so now I've got a new curve, new beginning, middle, and then my end goes right back to my original point. And so I have the entire outline of the panther traced. Okay, so we've got kind of the hard part done. We've got the first uh, outline of our logo uh, drawn. Now, at this point, just like we did with the heart, we might go in and uh, we might take our white arrow tool and adjust some of these points. Uh, whenever appropriate, we might use the smooth tool or we might use the warp tool to make some changes to this. Remember, logos are pretty precision drawings, so you don't want to uh, over-depend on these uh, imprecise tools like the warp tool and the smooth tool, but they are there for you uh, to use and, and help you get a little bit better. So I'm going to kind of skip the step of cleaning up uh, our path. 
but because we've already practiced that with the heart, and I want to show you what to do next. So um, we could go ahead and fill that in with black, and that's obviously what the basic uh, part of this logo is, is a large black shape. Um, but of course, now we can't really see anything that we've done. So um, we're going to continue drawing on layer two here, but we're going to expand layer two, and we see the path that we've drawn, the big, large black shape, and we can click on the eyeball just on the path. Not the eyeball on the layer, but the eyeball on the path uh, makes that path disappear. So then I can go in here, and I can draw my next shape. Again, I'm going to start with a black outline with no fill. And um, let's say that I'm going to do just this blue kind of wavy stripe here. Let me zoom in on that. It shouldn't take very long to do. I'm going to start at the tip. I'm going to go beginning. I'm going to go to the middle. And then I'm actually going to take my end all the way off the edge of, um, of my drawing. And we'll actually use the uh, Shape Builder tool to clip that off. What that will do is guarantee that this line, this smooth line, will be uh, the same. Okay, so I'm going to move over here. Again, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing out here because that's all going to get clipped off. I've got my beginning and then middle and then end. Okay, and <laughs> mine's, a little, mine's a little rough. I'm going to hit that with a smooth tool a couple of times um, to make it a little bit better. And uh, I could go ahead and fill this in with uh, a nice panther blue. Now, not being a Panthers fan myself, I'm not sure I'm going to pick the exact right blue here. Let me just try and approximate it. And I'm going to turn the black stroke off because there's no black outline on that. So as I bring back that black shape, I can select both the big black shape and the blue wavy shape. Shape Builder, like we learned the other day. I hold down Alt and I clip it off. So now I've got a nice, long, smooth shape here, and those, the blue shape lines up exactly with uh, my black shape. Okay, So that's one very simple step there. Um, we would continue to do the same thing with the other blue shapes. Okay, So again, if I were to cut this out of construction paper, I'd be continue to cut blue shapes. Big, long blue shape along the edge here. Blue shape along the top here. And of course, I would go off the top, go off the edge here, and clip it off uh, using my shape builder. Blue shapes in here, blue shapes in here, blue shape in here, and then some additional uh, white shapes. Okay, so that's how you set up a drawing. Um, I'm going to uh, get you guys started on your drawings at your workstations. I'm going to continue on drawing this on the screen so you can see uh, it finish up, and then you'll be able to see the final result uh, with this one. Okay, so I finished drawing all the little shapes for uh, this Panthers logo, and I wanted to show you what it means to uh, overdraw the, um, the shapes. So let me bring all the shapes on that I've drawn, and you can see that it looks kind of crazy. Um, you look at this shape here, and it's nice on the inside, but this outside part is, is crazy. Clearly, I was not following any kind of line uh, going around the edge. Okay, and the reason why I do that is because I've already drawn this nice uh, outside edge uh, using the pencil when I did the black. Okay, so I have this outside edge here that's already nicely drawn. So I can use the Shape Builder tool to uh, clip this shape that I've made uh, to the edge. So I don't have to stress out trying to make that exact outside edge again. Okay, so I select both the black shape and the crazy blue shape that I've drawn. I've done a nice job on the inside tracing the edges of the shape, but on the outside it doesn't matter. Shape Builder, hold down Alt, and I clip it right off. So it's, it's already to that nice smooth edge. Same thing over here. Okay, um, Select the nice shape that I made, hold down Alt, clip that off. And I did that in a couple other places here. Let me fill that in with the blue. Select both shapes. Hold down Alt to clip that off, and then everything uh, matches together. Okay, so a couple other things that I'll need to do: need to fill that with white and get rid of the stroke. There's no outline on that part. Same with this: get white, get rid of the stroke. Okay, uh, these shapes here. If I wanted to, I could combine them in using again Shape Builder. 
doesn't really matter because the visual effect is uh, the same. Okay, so that would be my finished uh, Panthers logo, and I can kind of compare it to uh, the original by turning off my layer two. It's still down on my layer one, so I can see how I've done. Uh, not too bad. There's a couple things that I might want to smooth out and fix before I would turn this in uh, for a grade. Now, the originals are done by uh, real professionals that have spent hours and hours in teams to really grind away at every little tiny point that's on this final logo. They've gone through the entire creative process, gone through many iterations and changes through this. All I'm really looking for is not necessarily for you to totally replicate the original. I'm looking for evidence that uh, you've done a good job of doing your points, making smooth lines, uh, and, and giving me evidence that you've learned how to use these drawing tools uh, that we've done in, uh, in Illustrator so far. Okay, um, So let's go ahead and continue on uh, with your sports logos at this point.